In addition to all of the IDE and styles and bitmap designer work that you've already seen that's new in Rad Studio 10 Seattle, I'm going to spend a few minutes on some of the new things that are in FireMonkey for 10 Seattle. For FireMonkey on Windows, there's been a significant overhaul and improvement, including mouse over hints, native style presentations, and Z order control. Multiview and T switch have it extended with the Windows 10 look and feel. Let's take a look at some of the, the controls and how they look on Windows 10. So here's an example. It's called the Native Controls Demo, and we've got it targeting uh, the different platforms, FireMonkey application. It's got uh, tab controls that show up at the top or bottom, depending on the platform you choose. It'll render the right styles or the platform style. So just look for the, the control type, and it either is set to platform or style. So here, this T-Memo is set to platform style. For the standard controls, we have a T-switch control, for example, and that's going to also have a control type that we can either style it or have it be the native platform. So let's run this on a 32 or 64-bit windows and see what some of this looks like. So the switch is a Windows 10 switch. There we go. We've got our calendar look, uh, edits, for example. And again, just as you got in, in previous versions, you get this little uh, icon look when it's native platform versus if it's styled. We can go and look at what it would look like on Windows. So there's that T-switch component. Uh, here's the memo and so on. So you can see that both at design time and then at runtime. And we got the multi-device preview happening as well. And all the samples that I'm showing you here are included in Rad Studio 10 Seattle. You can open them from either SourceForge or from uh, the samples area on the hard drive. And for FireMonkey, as I showed, depending on the platform you're running on, you can choose styled or platform. We've added control hints, and those work on both Windows and OS 10. Here's our form, and it's got uh, some buttons, and those buttons have hint text, for example, down here. So if we hover over the buttons, we'll get the hint. We can also display in the label this, this example. When it gets the hint, it'll display and put it in the label. We can also have shortcuts showing up in the hint if we have a checkbox turned on. We'll see that in action. And we have uh, menus, and we can have hints on menus as well. So if we bring up the, the menu items, we can set hints for different menu items. So for example, on menu 5, it's got a menu 5 hint. Let's take a look at this first on, on Windows. So we'll compile and run, and here we hover over it. There's the hover hint, and notice we've got the hint showing up on the label. There's the buy button, uh, and then uh, here's the hello hover hint. And then if we have form show, then we'll get the hint for the parent. If we turn on this checkbox, then the parent uh, is the form. For menus, we can have the hints show up. There they are, five and six. Here's an example of a shortcut that goes along with an action. So the control A, we could turn off that, and then we just get the, the hover hint. Let's run this on OS 10. So we've got our application. Let's hover over. There we go. There's the hint. A parent show hint is not turned on. So let's turn on a form show hint. There it is. Here's the hint value menus. So there's the menu 3, menu 4 hint. And those are the mouse hover hints working on Windows and OS 10. Then I want to show you the multi-view demo that we shipped, the multi-view control that has been enhanced to also work with Windows 10. So we see here the, the master and the detail area of the multi-view control. And then down here, we also have a tab control. And on multi-view, we have the choice of the different drawer options. There's a combo box that's included where we list the different behaviors, platform behavior, docked panel, popover, drawer, custom, navigation, pane. So what we want is the platform behavior to look like it should on each of the platforms, and in this case, running on Windows 10, that has the Windows 10 style. One other thing to note, and you'll see this when I run it, tab controls now can be scrollable if they don't fit within the size of your client area. So let's run this multi-views demo on Windows 10. So here's our little drawer. We can choose the mode. So if the mode is, for example, platform behavior, if it's popover, 
if it's a drawer that slides in and out. You might have some kind of custom. Now I mentioned about the tab control. Here's a tab control with a few tabs. If I shrink down this client area, you'll notice the two buttons here are enabled for scrolling back and forth to get to other tabs that are on the tab control. So that's new in 10 Seattle as well. Again, here we have the switch for Windows 10. Let's run this on OS 10, and we have our form. Let's go and choose platform behavior. So here's the popover. The platform just has it showing up so we can choose the, the right items. We want the navigation pane, and we can open that and close it. Again, if we minimize this window, we've got the tab item that doesn't quite fit, so we can scroll back and forth to get to the tab items we want. FireMonkey now supports drag and drop. There's a new interface for the drag and drop service so that FireMonkey can query and you can query to see if drag and drop is supported on the device that you're running on. And it supports dragging data from a FireMonkey application to other application. It works on Windows and OS 10. So let's take a look at FireMonkey drag and drop. So here's a simple example. It's got an edit box and we've got two radio buttons where we can take the input from the edit box and have it show up down here in this text control. And we can also use that and to get the bitmap image of what appears down there in the application. If we look at the code behind, it's, it says is the text edit uh, not empty and does the platform service support IFMX drag and drop? And if that's true, then we get the service as a return. If we do a mouse down on the control and drag it, then we'll get the drag data to either be the text, if we have the text radio button, or a, an image if we uh, have the radio button for dragging the, uh, the bitmap. And then it will begin the drag and then the drop is handled inside of the the runtime library and then we free the drag image so let's run this on uh, windows first i'll bring up um, microsoft word and we'll put some text in here and then drag as text we'll drag that over and there's the hello world and then drag as image we'll drag that over and now we have an image uh, inside of microsoft word or whatever the target application might be We'll go back and uh, run this on OS 10. So here's our application. And I'm using the notes application that comes with OS 10. So we'll put in hello world and have drag as text and we'll drag that over. And now we have the hello world text in our new note. And we'll also drag as an image. And now we have an image in our notepad as well. So there's also C++ examples for the new capabilities in FireMonkey, including the drag and drop. Uh, here it is, same exact uh, form. And then here we just see, we check to see if there's a platform service again, uh, using the language extension to make sure we can search for the interface, that there is a drag and drop surface. And then we get that service. And then we can just use the same kind of logic to get the text or get the image and begin the drag drop to whatever application we want. So we'll just run this one on Windows just to show uh, that it works the same way in both Object Pascal and C++. We'll drag this text over and we'll drag this image. There's the same application working in both Object Pascal and C++. I just want to mention also that touch animation is now uh, available for your Android applications. You don't need to do anything to enable or disable it. It's just enabled by default. And so if you have a list box or different buttons, you'll see in your Android applications the animation that simulates that same touch animation from the Google Material Design Guide. 
I do want to mention that there's many more little touches here and there in FireMonk. You've seen the bitmap style designer and styles and Windows 10 styles. And I encourage you to attend Darren Kaczynski's Code Rage 10 uh, sessions for both Object Pascal and C++. Uh, Code Rage 10 is coming up October 13th to 15th. Okay, again, and that was just a quick, quick look at some of the major bits as it relates to FireMonkey functionality, Windows 10, uh, multi-platform, uh, testing things on iOS 9. Again, Serena DuPont did a blog post a few days ago about the fact that we shipped our product, but then iOS 9 came out in the middle of September. So for all the capabilities we have in 10 Seattle, as long as you update your Xcode and update your devices to iOS 9, you can get the, the functionality of this in Red Studio 10 Seattle. There's a couple of gotchas, I think one about uh, Bluetooth or wireless keyboards that we're, we're checking on. As we talk about uh, little things along the way, uh, we'll be doing blog notes about any other issues that we find. We were testing with iOS 9 betas, but of course my, uh, Apple changes things between betas, and now some people are on a new beta of Xcode and a new beta of iOS 9 in it, and of course El Capitan OS 10 is still not out yet, and changes are being made. So uh, we'll keep on top of that, and, and the blog posts, Serena, myself, Jim, Al will be posting notes along the way, and then we'll catch up as we always do uh, with updates uh, as uh, other things happen. Again, Microsoft is doing updates to Windows 10 as well. Uh, it's always uh, fun to be on top of and ahead of and sometimes alongside of the different releases of these platforms and we'll keep you posted. But everything I've done so far, a couple workarounds, uh, I've got iOS 9 on my uh, iPhone 6, and all the demos I did on iPhone have been iOS, no, iOS 9 samples. I haven't upgraded my machine yet for El Capitan. I have a test system, so I can't really uh, say much about that because uh, it's not a released product. Uh, we'll keep moving forward. Anything else to add on FireMonkey, Jim, or Al? There was a question if there was a FireMonkey tray icon tool for uh, FireMonkey. There isn't. We don't ship one, and the reason is because the FireMonkey applications don't have the same tie-ins to the Windows messaging that uh, VCL applications do. So that's why the tray icon component we ship on works on VCL. But there is on um, FMX Express does link link to one. I don't think I've tried that one. It seems like I remember looking at one at one point. I'm not sure if I tried that one or not. The other thing is you, you always have on each of the platforms access to the API. Yeah, exactly. Uh, whether it's Windows, OS 10, iOS, Android, there's always a way to do platform specific work from a FireMonkey app. Um, and you can you can test. There's the OS version, so you can test to see which version of the operating system you're on. So that's always those API hooks are always available to you if you want to do something specific for a platform. But again, what we try to do in Flyer Monkey is give you the power of each platform and a way to get to it ultimately. At the same time, that ability to build your applications and have them run on all the four platforms that we're targeting. And again, you can if-def your code and do other things that you want in code at runtime uh, if you want to do something special.